Hello and welcome. We're in the middle of our Bake Off Challenge theme as we found out what it means to have patience. Patience is waiting until later for what you want now. You know, it can be tough to wait for things that you really want, right? That's definitely true when you're baking. Yeah, you have to wait for bread to rise. You have to wait to mix in certain ingredients. But you know, the hardest time to wait is when things are baking in the oven. You want your tasty, delicious treats right then and there. But you have to wait for it, right? You have to wait till they're ready. Of course, the toughest thing to wait for has got to be a batch of homemade delicious cookies. You know, when, when they're in the oven and you can smell the deliciousness? What is your favorite cookie? Well, mine as well, probably all of them. But I do have a sweet spot to speak of, of chocolate chip cookies. That's what today's game cookies. This game, this game is called chocolate chip or oatmeal raisin. All right, I'm gonna show you a picture. And is that a chocolate chip cookie or an oatmeal raisin? Hmm, I'm looking at that, I'm not sure. I'm, th I'm thinking that's oatmeal raisin. Ha <laughs> ha, I was right. All right, let's try another one. Ooh, chocolate chip or oatmeal raisin? That I, I don't know, what do you think? I think it's probably chocolate chip. Yep, chocolate chip. I know my cookies. Uh, ooh, here's a plate. Ooh, a whole bunch of them. Uh, what do you think? I think I'm gonna say oatmeal raisin. What do you think? Oh, it's chocolate chip. Oh, that doesn't look like a chocolate chip cookie. But anyway, yum. Here's our next one. Chocolate chip or oatmeal raisin. I'm going oatmeal raisin. What do you think? Oatmeal raisin, I was right. All right, oh, here's a pack of cookies. That looks like a pack of chocolate chip cookies. Absolutely to me. What do you think? Oh no, I was wrong. It was oatmeal raisin cookies. All right, which has more calories? Chocolate chip cookies or oatmeal raisin? I'm gonna think, I'm gonna say chocolate chip. I'm not sure, what do you think? Chocolate chip, yep, it's got all those chocolate chips in it. All right, which has more sodium? A chocolate chip cookie? or an oatmeal raisin. I'm gonna go with chocolate chip again. Nope, I was wrong. Oatmeal raisin, oatmeal raisin. All right, oh, here's another picture. Oh, that's, that to me is definitely chocolate chip. I can see those, right? Yes, it was chocolate chip. All right, what percent of Americans say chocolate chip is their favorite? I think it's gonna be pretty high. I'm gonna go with like 70%. What do you think? Nope. 53%. Oh well, well here's another picture. Oatmeal raisin or chocolate chip? I'm going oatmeal raisin. What do you think? Yep, oatmeal raisin. I was correct. Ha <laughs> Nice job on the game, my friends. And for the record, I love chocolate chip cookies, oatmeal raisin cookies, peanut butter cookies, Girl Scout cookies, sugar cookies, Christmas cookies, frosted cookies, nutter butters, You're my calm in the chaos My peace in the war You speak light into darkness You tell me I'm yours Only you, Jesus, are in control You are my Every heartbeat, every breath that I breathe You're all I need Jesus
It's me, Graham, and today I'm serving up a delicious dish that's gonna make you jealous. Safety first. Double chocolate chocolate chip cookies. Mmm. Mm. Taste test time. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not gonna eat these now, they're way too hot. I'm gonna have to wait to enjoy this chewy, gooey deliciousness. Which means I'll need patience. Patience is waiting until later for what you want now. It'll be a challenge to wait, but I will do it. smell that? Well, no. You wouldn't. <laughs> so, let me try and describe the smell for you. Imagine you're walking along a beach made entirely of chocolate. The chocolate ocean is waving nearby. And as you breathe in, the air is a warm chocolate breeze. That's what it feels like to be in the presence of these cookies. Maybe just one bite. No, no cookies. Oh, I've got to think about something else. Light vegetable oil, mannequin, crock pot, cookies. No, ah. <laughs> time to put these away. There, now it will be easy to wait. I can still smell them. In today's story, we'll hear about a group of people who are finding it very hard to wait. And they knew better. I'll be here when you get back. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Exodus, chapter 32, verses 1 through 35. For hundreds of years, God's people lived as slaves in Egypt. They cried out to God, and God rescued them. He led them through the midst of the Red Sea, to freedom in the wilderness. And that's where he showed his love and care by providing bread from heaven and water from solid rock. Three months later, God led his people to Mount Sinai where they camped at the foot of the mountain in the desert. Moses was called to by God from the mountain. Say to my people, the Israelites, you have seen for yourselves what I did to Egypt. You saw how I carried you on the wings of eagles and brought you to myself. Now obey me completely. If you do, then out of all the nations, you will be my special treasure. Moses shared God's word with the people. We will do everything the Lord has said. God called Moses to meet with him on the mountaintop. Moses spoke to the elders of the Israelites before he left. 
Wait here until I come back. My brother Aaron and her will stay with you. Anyone who has a problem can go to them. Don't sweat it. We got this. No one can come up. The mountain is holy. Noted. I'll see you soon-ish. Have fun storming the mountain. As Moses and his assistant Joshua began to climb the steep slopes, the glory of God settled on Mount Sinai like thick cloud and burning fire. I will give you stone tablets. They contain the law and commandments I have written to teach the people. Moses stayed within the cloud on top of Mount Sinai, talking with God for 40 days and nights. Meanwhile, back at the camp, the Israelites were growing restless. I'm so like, over this desert camping thing. Yeah, that Moses seems kind of unreliable to me. Yeah, what if he's making up all the God stuff? You know, besides the cloud and the Red Sea and food from heaven and all that. Yeah, he's certainly taking long enough. Hey, Aaron, where's your brother? Aaron shrugged and pointed to the cloud that hovered over the mountain. Uh, uh, you know as much as I do. We need someone to really take charge. A God we can see. A God who will lead us. Yeah, 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 keep talking, bro. Moses may have brought us out of Egypt, but he's just disappeared. Poof. What are you going to do, Aaron? Aaron was tired of the people's complaining, so he buckled under pressure. Ha <laughs> ha, uh, well, uh, give me all your gold jewelry. Aaron took all the gold the people brought him and melted it down. Then he shaped it into the form of a golden calf. Israel, here is your God who brought you out of Egypt. It's like so shiny. Well, well when Aaron saw how excited the people were, he built an altar in front of the calf. Tomorrow will be a feast day. So all the next day, the Israelites brought sacrifices to honor a golden calf made out of their own jewelry. The people ate, drank, and danced wildly in front of the statue. Who wants to walk like an Egyptian, huh? Not me, we just got out of there, thanks to this amazing calf. Back on the mountain in the midst of the cloud, God spoke to Moses. Go down. Your people you brought up out of Egypt have become very sinful. They have turned away from what I commanded. Heartbroken, Moses and Joshua made their way back down the mountain. Moses carried two heavy stone tablets covered with the laws God had given. The two men stopped in their tracks. Wait, is that the sound of war? It's not the sound of winning or losing, that's singing. <sighs> Moses and Joshua picked up their pace, scrambling down the mountainside. As they approached the camp, Moses saw the golden calf, dazzling in the sunlight. The Israelites danced wildly around it. Inconceivable! Moses was so angry, he took the stone tablets and hurled them to the ground. Stop! Stop this at once! The music and dancing stopped. Moses marched right through the crowd, right up to the golden calf. Aaron tried to sheepishly duck away, but Moses spotted him at once. What did these people do to you? How did they make you lead them into such terrible sin? Okay, don't be angry. You know how these people are. They, they said, make us a god to lead us. And? And then they gave me their gold jewelry. And? And I threw it into the fire, and out came this calf. Aaron couldn't look his brother in the eye. They both knew the true story. Why didn't you wait for me? The people are running wild. We've, we've become a joke to our enemies. Moses toppled the golden calf into the fire to burn. Then he ground the golden calf into a fine powder and scattered it on the water. Drink it, all of you. This is hard to drink. Oh. My stomach feels downright awful. God helped his people over and over. But when they had to wait, they forgot his goodness. They chose their own way. And the consequences weren't so golden.
I have a confession to make. I didn't eat the cookies! I had patience! I have another confession to make. Sometimes I don't have patience. No, sometimes I'm more like the Israelites in the story. I trick myself into thinking I can't wait for what I want. Have you ever done that? Have you ever eaten a snack when you weren't supposed to because you couldn't wait until dinner? Have you ever found the secret hiding place for presents because you couldn't wait until your birthday to find out what you got? A lot of us have done those things even though we know better. Maybe instead of tricking ourselves into thinking we can't wait, we can remember what's true. Instead of eating that snack you're not supposed to, remember it spoils your appetite at dinner time. Instead of sneaking around and looking for presents, remember how happy it makes others when they surprise you. And if you're waiting for something big, some pain to go away or sadness to end, remember what God has done in the past. Remember his miracles. Remember his son, Jesus, who died on a cross for us and who came back to life in three days. Ask God to help you control what you think. Here is the one thing to remember today. When you have to wait, remember what's true. It sounds easy to control what you think, but really it takes practice. Start now and who knows? Someday you may find yourself on a chocolate beach near a chocolate ocean feeling a warm chocolate breeze. Ew! Chocolate seagull. I don't think I'm hungry anymore. Moses was angry because of how impatient the people had become. Over and over again, God had helped them. God had rescued them from Egypt. God had led them through the wilderness and the desert. God had helped them find food and water every day. And after all that, when the Israelites had to wait for Moses for just a little while, they forgot what God had told them about who he was and how to follow him. And they chose their own way. In the end, they had to face the consequences. Yeah. If only they had remembered what's true about God, that they could trust God no matter what. That God is faithful and trustworthy, and God would never, ever leave them. If the Israelites had focused on those things, you know, this story could have had a much better ending, right? Yeah. You know, we can make a better choice than they did. We can choose to trust God and to be patient. When you have to wait, remember what's true. So let's pray and ask God to help us do that. Ready? One, two, three. God. Thank you for being trustworthy and true. Please help us to be patient and avoid making the same mistakes as the Israelites did. When we feel like that we can't wait, help us make the wise choice and not give in. Remind us of how loving and faithful you truly are. Thank you for all always being there to guide us. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, that was a pretty wild story, right? I can't believe that the Israelites actually made a gold statue to be their God. Just because, you know, just because they were tired of waiting. Still, even though they really messed up, you know, God was still there for them. God had a good plan for all of them. Even though they, they sinned and disobeyed, you know, God's plan was so, so much bigger. The truth is this, all of us have a hard time waiting sometimes, right? Yeah. We get impatient. We, we, we don't understand why we have to wait. In those times, we might be tempted. Yeah, we might be tempted to take a shortcut. To do something that's that's dishonest or to try something bad just to get what we want. But you know, we don't have to give in to that. We don't have to give in to that temptation. When you have to wait, remember what's true. When you do, you can choose to live the way that God wants you to live, even when you might not feel it. 
You know, you can remember how God has helped you in, in the past, and you can remember that God is here with us now, right here. No matter what's going on, you can always remember how God loves you. Yeah. That God loves you so much that God's for all of us. So when you have to wait, remember what's true. God loves you. And God is always, always with you. And, and I think that will help you adjust your attitude so that, that you can have patience in any situation that comes up. Hmm, I hope so. Well, my friends, that's it. That's all we have for today's Cave Kids Clubhouse. The Cave Tykes Wonder Clubhouse is coming up right after this at 1030. And another midweek Cave Kids Clubhouse will be right here on Wednesday including the so-and-so show. So have a great week. We'll see you.